Hi. So in today's video, we're going to be doing some photo scanning. Now because of isolation we have been clearing out a lot of stuff and actually found this old photo scanner. So this was a gift that my dad gave to my mum, um, no idea when, probably a fair few years ago. He bought it so she can rescan all of her old negatives and then start to digitize them just so she can have a digital archive of them and not have to have lots and lots of prints because they can definitely take up space. However, I've been very interested in it, because obviously I don't have an Epson scanner, and I'm not really probably going to buy one. I'm not developing myself, and I'm probably not going to be doing it for a long while. So the negatives that I'll be scanning will be ones that I've taken probably a few months ago, and I'm really excited to just try it out, because I'm not expecting it to be as good as an Epson scanner. However, I'm open to being surprised, so let's just jump into it. Okay, so, I'm ready to start unboxing it, and I'll bring you guys along to see what actually comes with it. So you've got your instruction manual, you have your scanning plate holder, I don't actually know what that is, but I'll figure it out. Then your actual slide bay, um, a different slide bay, they're slightly different, I don't know what the difference is. Never done my own scanning before. But then we have the actual scanner itself and power cable and that's about it. So I am going to set this baby up, go grab some negatives and I will show you what happens when you set it up. So I'll get this out of the box. Speaking of plastic, that's all you're getting. Oh, I need an SD card. I'm gonna go get an SD card right now. Okay, I'm back. Um, I have an SD card. Um, hoping there's nothing on it. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna wipe it, but I don't know what's on it, so therefore I'm never gonna know if there was something cool. Okay, um, I got my blower. Um, hopefully that's the last time I need to do this. So I will grab the negatives, and um, yes, they're still in there cheap paper sleeves from when I got them from my lab. Um, yes, I should definitely be archiving them properly, but I haven't got around to doing that yet. So I will, um, but these are from a portrait shoot that I did a couple months ago, and I am going to use these negatives. I hope I don't do anything wrong here, but I've also never done this before. If I just stick it in, uh, it should all... Oh wow! Oh my god. I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't think it would be this bad. I mean, hey, you can edit on the go. I'll just do some scanning and I will come back to you guys because obviously me doing this is going to be a long process so so this is Michael from the future I'm filming this a few days after I filmed the last part because honestly I feel like I didn't cover much of the editing process that I did in terms of what you can actually get out of the negatives so I figured I would just quickly run through that now so now we're in Lightroom and I wanted to just quickly go over some of the edits that I've done and sort of what happens when you put them into Lightroom if you're planning on editing which I definitely think you should so as you can see, they're quite washed out and it kind of looks like you're in a boardroom meeting and it's on a crappy projector. And honestly, the details that you get out of these photos tends to not be that sharp. However, it is only a five megapixel scanner, so I don't think you really expect that much. 
So this is a photo that I really like and something that I've shown in a previous video and honestly the reason I like it so much is because of the dynamic range that was actually shown in the film. Because you can see great details in the shadows and you can actually still see the grey clouds in the sky and I thought it was pretty awesome to have it all in one photo. But the reason I want to show you in this video is because it's actually a good test to see how much latitude you have in editing with the JPEGs you get from this scanner. So if I show you the before here, it's quite washed out, there's very little contrast and kind of crushing the blacks in the trees here, although you still get some details in the shadow, so it's not the worst, definitely salvageable. So this is the edit that I did and you can see that I've punched up the colors a little bit, it's still quite soft, but that's not really much you can do about that, the sharpening tool will not help you. And another thing is that if you do decide you don't want to have you want to have more detail in your highlights, then you can actually bring it down and it'll keep most of the detail in there, well as much as the scan is going to keep anyway. I prefer to have this edit a lot more white, but that's just how I want to edit it and it does not mean that you have to do that because you can actually have a decent amount of exposure latitude. I'll now just run through some other edits that I've taken because honestly I kind of like the colours and the more I edit with these colours it kind of reminds me of expired film which is definitely something that I like playing around with. So the colours from the scanner are quite interesting and it's definitely similar to the kind of colour changes and shifts you would get from shooting expired film. I also think this is a great alternative for if you're wanting to just scan your parents or grandparents old negatives or slides to digitise them and sort of see how they were when they were teenagers or young adults. And it definitely will get the job done. Um, the files are not the best quality but considering the price it's like a quarter or maybe even a sixth of getting an Epson scanner depending on which one you get. So I definitely think that it's worth it if you're just doing it for memorabilia and you're not doing it for the best photo quality. I'm definitely going to keep trying out this scanner and seeing how it reacts to different kinds of photos so if you want to see the results from those you can follow me on my Twitter and Instagram which is at MIGmedia and I hope to see you again soon.